In this video, I want to talk about a few patterns um, for the service dog mannequin dog pattern I already have on Etsy. Now you'll have to excuse the background. This is a supply storage room that also has a bed in it. And this, um, Coco has to have surgery. And so what I've been doing is trying to get most of the sewing done and come up with small projects to do in case she has a hard time with recovery. Now the last time she had surgery, I had a crate set up. Um, she has two crates, but I kept it all out in the living room um, and kept her in her crate when she needed to just do complete bed rest. And this time I think I might do it a little different. If she makes it through the surgery, um, this is going to be kind of a double wallop for her because she didn't, uh, she had a collapsed lung in the first one. So I'm expecting her to have a worse recovery. And so I have set this up in here so that um, this is, a, a bed is kind of her favorite place to sleep because she has a back issue and she can stretch out. So I'm setting things up in here and I thought this is a good way to do video patterns a little bit differently. So you see a stuffed dog there made with um, boy knitting looms and that pattern will be in my Etsy shop. And I'm going to list um, the links to this video on that pattern. So anyone who buys the pattern to make a stuffed dog will have the link to come to this video and make these outfits for a dog. Now, um, last year when she had surgery is when I made this dog pattern. It's a little bit shorter uh, nose to tail than she is, but otherwise it's almost her size. And um, a friend of mine at the time was losing her dog. And I saw what she was going through, and I didn't, um, I just needed some kind of a replica of Coco in case she doesn't make it. And so I made this, and it's become a mannequin, really, for a service dog. I had had a seizure once in 2018, a very bad one, and the dog was with me. And so I have an image of her with her pink sweatshirt on stuck in my head from that seizure. So the first pattern I made was a pink sweatshirt like hers. I could put her pink sweatshirt on this mannequin, um, but I decided to make new stuff because this will keep me focused on a service dog if I lose my service dog. So we're going to do video patterns. Um, now the, the crocheted and knitted sweatshirt you see that I've already done is very easy to do. You use um, an N size hook on the crochet square and you make a 12 inch square using two strands of worsted weight yarn. And I used Red Heart Acrylic Super Saver Perfect Pink. And then, so you make um, a double crochet, well, two strands, I mean, um, and of course a granny square is double crochet. You, two strands, 12 inch square, crochet square. You then take size 13 straight needles. You cast on with the same two strands of yarn and the same color if you want. Cast on 24 stitches on size 13 needles, two strands of yarn, and you garter stitch for 24 rows. You then take your same crochet hook, you make two strands. One needs to be about 15 inches long because you're going to gather it through one side of what is going to be the hood and it just becomes a drawstring. The other one needs to be about 20 inches long and you loop it through 
this side and the other side of the crochet square and it ties the sweatshirt on. When you need to attach the hood, and you can see how the hood fits the dog, you take your same crochet hook and either one or two strands of yarn and you you line the two edges up evenly the knitted piece with the crocheted piece and you use either a single crochet or you can do it with a tapestry needle and yarn and you sew the two pieces together and this makes a little hooded sweatshirt for your dog mannequin Coco wore her pink sweatshirt for about um, I don't know eight years I have she has coats and sweaters and stuff but that's like her favorite one and in service dog training um, what I had done on her sweatshirt is print block print service dog on it on her real sweatshirt and um, I didn't feel I needed to advertise that she was a service dog all the time because she is a service dog she has since I kind of changed my attitude a little bit we have a service dog vest um, but she used it just by me training her to use her pink sweatshirt as her working sweatshirt she knew she was working when she put on her pink sweatshirt then when she got a back issue we couldn't get it off of her because of the way the real sweatshirt is um, she has to step into it and it goes over her head and we couldn't get it off of her so she doesn't use it that much anymore and she uses others but it's a wonderful simple pattern to make a sweatshirt out of yarn for a mannequin dog now the next thing I'm doing she wears red rubber boots in the winter and sometimes in the rain um, now I'm making these a little bit short on purpose I'm using just eight stitches I mean eight rows I'm sorry so you need the boy 12 peg knitting loom single strand of yarn um, I'm using leftovers so I don't know the ounces on either of these projects I would think um, if you've got a Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo Perfect Pink skein and then divided it in half and used it two strands you would probably have enough for the sweatshirt this is scraps but her boots happen to be red boots so I am making four red boots and they are like I said single strand on a boy knitting loom you knit eight rows and then when you get to the end you gather it like a hat and secure it and knot it on the inside and you have cocoa boots now I have overstuffed the legs just a little bit but this is also going to be like a mannequin or a visual image for me in my house so I have extra double pointed wood knitting needles in the legs um, she does stand without them but I figured if I'm going to be putting clothes on it I might as well have it a little bit secure so you can think about that too now if you're making this for a child um, I wouldn't put the knitting needles in and you might want to make the boots 12 rows instead of 8 because they will stay on a little better I just like the little her feet are so funny when she wears these boots um, her feet actually look small because the boots fit her foot perfectly so I'm making them a little short but you can do 12 rows on the boots and then finish it off as I said so there is a sweatshirt and boots and the other pattern I'm going to add to this right now is um, another crocheted sweater but in the shape um, granny squares with a red cross because service dogs are medical dogs and if you have a child and you're getting them used to the idea of having a service dog um, this is a good project to put together and in that case 
the pink sweatshirt would be non-working and the Red Cross uh, sweater or vest I'm making is going to be working. So you could even use it with a child or a disabled person and have them work out all the issues with the service dog um, and what you expect of the dog by having a working sweatshirt and a non-working sweatshirt and boots so far. Now, I want to add just a couple of things um, on the crochet square and on the knitting on the sweatshirt and also on the boots. I'm assuming you know how to cast on and to end um, knitting or crochet. So I'm not going into those directions here. When I mention working, non-working, these um, the word working is an important keyword when you have a, a service dog. It's one of the first words you should um, use with your dog. Um, a lot of people have given me a hard time over the years because they're like, why don't you take her to the dog park? Why doesn't she have a dog party? You know, why won't you let her come over and play? You're going to face those things when you have a, a service dog. And so you have to explain to them, to people sometimes, this is a working dog. This is a tool, um, even though she's a dog and she's wonderful and everything. This is a tool to help the person with a medical issue. So the word working is one of the first words to teach the dog working or not working because um, like with Coco Bean, I've also done it with her leashes. She has a 20 foot green leash and she knows when she's on a 20 foot leash, she's not working. Even though they are working dogs, they need fun and relaxation and just to goof off once in a while to relieve tension. If you have a good service dog, they're actually working all the time. But this gives them a way to say, oh good, I can roll around in the grass. I can chase a ball. I can have some fun. I can be a dog. So um, that's why in this video I have this pink one would be the non-working sweater or sweatshirt for a service dog mannequin. And as I said, the other one is going to be the working one. And I'm, I'm bringing this up and, and being so specific about this. Um, a friend of mine has a child who has had epilepsy for a while, but the seizures have gotten worse. And so we were talking about, uh, I trained, I trained Coco Bean and, um, this person knows that and Coco Bean is an extremely good service dog, but with seizure alert dogs, it's actually a, t um, an, a born talent that the dog has, and then you have to reinforce it. Not every dog can do it because it's the electrical changes in a person's brain that the dog knows are going to happen. Um, another example is Coco can hear a hawk from about a mile away, but a cat could walk right up to her. So it's a whole different ESP kind of thing going on with a seizure alert dog. And um, when you have a child who has epilepsy, and I've had epilepsy since my car accident. Um, service dogs that are trained for seizure alert cost about $10,000. And obviously a stuffed dog is not going to do the same thing as a living dog. But if you have a child and you make this set for them, they will start to recognize when they are going to have a seizure. In other words, if you see a child run over and put the working sweater on the dog mannequin, you can expect that the child doesn't feel well. Sometimes people know before it happens. Sometimes we don't. So that's why I'm being specific. And um, this first video for patterns is a working and a non-working sweater type item and boots. 
Now this is really kind of funny. I've got the stuffed mannequin right there and I want to talk about the boots for a minute. Um, and one other thing you can do with this pattern if you want. And over here next to me is the real Coco Bean supervising everything with her snoring. Um, she's uh, quite medicated right now um, before the surgery. I want to mention boots and why boots are important for service dogs. Um, Coco is part Whippet, part Dachshund. My son's dog is um, Black Lab and Whippet. Whippets and Black Labs for the, and Dachshunds for that uh, matter, they all do a lot of foot grooming. They love their feet. It's like they have painted toenails all the time and they just love their feet. Um, but for all dogs, wearing boots in the winter is extremely important. They're little rubber boots. I can find the brand name. I think they're called Paws something. Um, I can find the brand name and I recommend them for dogs because of the way we plow our roads. When plows come through in the winter time, they put salt on the roads. And that salt burns a dog or a cat's paws. And even though she struggled against them at first because they feel a little weird, um, she now looks for her boots when we're going out in the snow and um, there's salt on the roads. I mean, it, it hurts them. It's a chemical salt burn on their paws. So this is why I've included boots with this pattern, because they are a necessity for a service dog. You don't want a service dog um, in pain in their feet when you need them to pay attention to a task. Now the one other thing I want to mention you can do with this pattern. Right now I laid the, dog, the stuffed dog down because I wanted to put the boots on. But let's say you, as an adult, or um, maybe with children especially, or somebody um, with maybe a severe mental disability, one thing that you run into if your service dog gets sick is a complete panic. Um, last year when Coco, we had someone try to break into the house and it, it woke the dog up suddenly and that's when her back went out and we found out she has a disc problem. And um, she sat on me until I was awake enough to call the police and then it was an all night thing with fingerprints and the whole bit. And they're working all the time is what my point is and when she woke up in the middle of the night she heard this guy trying to come in the window and um, she couldn't move by eight o'clock in the morning she literally couldn't move because her back um, a disc had had not ruptured but been compressed and all of a sudden we had a sick service dog I had to put her in a hood crate to get her to the vet so that she didn't move. The hood crate is just a little bit bigger than she is and I had to almost physically hold her in the hood crate so she didn't try to move. I had to put a muzzle on her which I've never done because I was afraid she was in so much pain that she might snap. Now that's she's never snapped at anybody and in fact she didn't that day but you have to be aware of these things when a dog who is trained to take care of you suddenly becomes ill. So um, you can act it out. You can um, pretend the dog gets hit by a car. What, what are you going to do? Pretend a pit bull shows up that's not on a leash and attacks your dog. What are you going to do? You can use this as like a little Red Cross training tool for yourself on how to take care of a service dog. Um, I'm, I'm a little better this year with the surgery, but I am, if, if she doesn't make it or when I lose her, I'm losing my nurse. 
and they really are like that they're like your right arm they're like your crutches your wheelchair they just are right there for you all the time and you have to be aware of what they need um, to keep them out of pain harm and injury and you can do that with this pattern you can work it all out without having your dog play dead or something now this is going to be another very easy pattern to do this involves granny squares you again need an N hook this one's by Lion Brand and you need um, at least four ounces of two different colors one of which is red now this red is um, Red Heart Super Saber acrylic in cherry red and again I'm using it two strands together and you need to make two 12 inch granny square um, nine patches really they're going to be slightly bigger than 12 inches when you sew them together or depending on how you sew them together um, if you crochet these granny squares together you'll it'll be a little bit bigger if you use a tapestry needle and whip stitch them together it'll stay about this size you need to make um, a total of 10 red squares and a total of eight of any other color this is lion brand homespun um, homespun is made in the USA red heart super saver is made in the USA of imported materials um, homespun is a bulky yarn so I use that single strand and you can see that the squares are not quite as um, solid as the red ones but that will be fine with this pattern and once you sew them together they'll even out anyway so you need to make two nine patches like this and then we're going to crochet them together at the top and it'll um, it'll just sit over the mannequin that way so four in, four ounces at least of each of the two colors one of which is red use the yarn um, two strands together if it's worsted weight uh, single strand if it's bulky weight and what I'm going to do is use a tapestry needle and extra homespun to sew um, just whip stitch these together in the rows as you see placed here and when I get them both done we'll put it together and put it on the dog and there is the working service dog Red Cross sweater it's very simple it's very visual and I have to tell you there's a little history about it um, in one of my seizures I forgot how to dial 911 and long story short I ended up getting a medic alert button so I can just press the button instead of calling 911 but if you think about um, one of the things your service dog visually reminds you of is to get help and of course a Red Cross is the epitome of who to call if you need help um, so I guess if I wanted to I could write 911 across um, the middle bar of that Red Cross to remind me to call 911 and this is if I lose the dog because I'm planning on using this as a visual reminder when I don't have a dog so what I did was I put the two nine patches together and then I did single crochet the two of them together at the top now the reason I mentioned crochet there is because you may choose to use the bigger the same boy looms only bigger in case you want to make a slightly bigger dog or a longer body or something like that so by using um, the crochet or you could do it in whip stitch but I think if you needed to make a wider um, piece for like a larger mannequin if you put rows of single crochet in between the two nine patches that would work better um, if you need to expand it so there is um, oh and again about a 12 to 15 inch 
chained a crochet chained strand to hold it in place the other thing is when you take this one off of her um, or off of your um, mannequin dog you can lay it down flat and be um, what what I call the dog's place now place is another very important word with dogs for some reason you say place and they know their place it's amazing how much it works and I have certain rugs hankies um, things around the house that she knows are her place and what you could do is when you're not um, using this as a visual reminder or you know display or however you're going to use it you can just untie that front tie and lay it down flat and it's long enough for the dog mannequin to stand on and then the dog is in her place so these are the types of um, patterns I'm working on with this dog mannequin. Other people uh, can do many other things with a dog mannequin. They can simply make it to display commercial coats that they sell or something like that. Um, but for us, it's a service dog. And um, in my case, a visual reminder of losing my dog which means the Red Cross can also mean grief. Now, um, I showed this to a few people um, before I made the patterns. And um, believe it or not, one of them, their dog, went right up to it like it was a real dog. Um, and one person was the person losing her dog. And she said she saw the benefit of it. Um, and in fact, we were talking about making one of these for her mother who has Alzheimer's because her mother was losing her dog, really. And her mother looked at it and said, but that's not my Daisy. So you have to kind of feel somebody out before you give someone one of these. But these are simple, easy to make patterns for a mannequin of Coco, the service dog.